Sorry, for the, for the camera, your name is? My name is Sandy. And your surname, sorry, is Oh, Sandy Olverd. Excellent. And you obviously weave. Uh, yes, um, weaving is part of my passion. Um, yes. Basket weaving, uh, it's a, a medium that I discovered, or techniques I discovered in the early 90s. Mm. And it's an area I'm extremely passionate about. Mm. And it's a, a wonderful medium to explore within a community context. Yes. And um, you've had most of the community here, I think. Um, yes, we've had a very busy week here in the courtyard of the Port Adelaide Visitor Information Centre. We've been doing a project called the Weaving River, and it's just a project that's linked with a lot of the local Aboriginal women yeah. and the local Tongan community. Yeah. Um, we've had Anangu, so the women from the Central Desert region, yeah. Nadanjeri, Ghana women, um, and each day we've been learning about different techniques and ways of working. So they've been teaching you? Well, it's sort of been a cross-cultural exchange because yeah. I've been involved in this area for so long. I have learned a lot of skills from these women over the years. Yeah. So it's an extending to the community further, really. We've been having open community workshops yeah. where people can come along and sit and join in and learn about the different weaving and how it relates to the different cultures and groups around um, Port Adelaide area. And some of the pieces that you've got, got here. Okay. So some of the area, uh, pieces I've got here are made by the Anangu people, yeah. um, Aboriginal people from the Central Desert region, and they work with a dry grass. Up, up yeah, okay. so here it is. The women work with a dry grass because that's usually all that's available out in the desert. And they weave with raffia because raffia can also be dyed out in the desert and get these beautiful bush colours using the natural dyes. And um, it's a coiling and stitching where we go around and around yeah. and around. We stitch and we make wonderful forms yeah. such as these baskets that we have so here. So they came ready dyed? Um, right. Well, we did some bush dyeing before this program, and we had bush dyed raffia here, as well as lots of bright colours of raffia yeah. and different coloured walls. Yeah. And we also work with emu feathers too. So we had emu feathers here that cool. we get stitched into the works as well. Excellent. You ran down the emu. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, emus are always running around the place. But actually, Port Adelaide, yes. um, we we buy them from the emu farm up in Murray Bridge. Yep. Buy them online, actually. But. Um, yeah. Uh, the Anangu ladies love emu feathers because they also work them into these fantastic hats that oh. they wear, like these bush hats which, with feathers in it. Um, and uh, yeah, so it really adds a distinct look to their artwork. And that's traditional, is it? Having well, it's not really, it's a new. I suppose emu feathers have always been a part of different Aboriginal people's lives or um, aspects within their different objects that they'll make. But within the context of the sort of work we've got here, it's a more contemporary approach. But it's still an expression of their own sort of cultural identity, the work that they create. So how many um, people were we? Um, over the course of the week, um, I'd say maybe a few hundred have, well, might have passed through by the end of the week. or a few um, baskets. Well, quite a few, but everyone's wandered off home with them. So yeah. there's been lots of wonderful creations being made here that the community get to keep their work. And, and how much grass? Well, we've been harvesting a lot of uh, materials. I, I, have, I get permission to harvest from different areas in our community. Um, and so we've certainly gone through... Oh, different locations. Um, in uh, side, Sometimes, yeah, through private gardens and family and friends. Oh, yeah. I get to know the different materials that we can access because the Aboriginal women use dry grass, but I also use things like iris, watsonia, sweet mm -hmm. corn, daylily, daffodil. So there's lots of common garden materials that can be used in basket weaving. Mm. So this is only really a small insight into the extensive yeah. world of um, basketry. Yeah. And how many people did it take to organise them? The week's weaving? Oh, well, um, it, it didn't really take a, to organise. It was just part of the Port Festival, mm -hmm. so it was advertised widely through their programs. But, I mean, how many people ran the, the show? There was yourself and... And oh, different, each day we've had a different guest artist or different guest artists from the Aboriginal community. Mm -hmm. So today we had Donna, who's linked with um, Curiello, yeah. uh, an Aboriginal organisation at Larks Bay. Yesterday we had the Anangu ladies, the, mm -hmm. the Central Desert um, uh, Aboriginal people, and, yeah. and they were weaving like uh, this style. Yeah. Uh, so each day we've had special guest artists coming along to work with me and the community to explore and create beautiful artworks. Wonderful. Just finally, how many baskets have you weaved this week? Uh, and, oh, this week? Um, well, because I'm teaching, I've only helped people get started. I don't really... Hundreds. What do you do with them? Um, well, over time you sell them. Yeah. Yes. It's remarkable, isn't it?
But um, yeah, so well, gives you, away. You know, family and friends probably get sick to death of it. But you know, yeah. uh, you can make oh, really. You have a house full of that. You will. I do actually still have a house full of stuff like that. But um, you can make great functional forms as well as wonderful sculptural forms. So, like things like this is the sort of work that the Aboriginal people have been exploring, making dogs and all kinds of things. Goannas. The goanna over here. It's pretty groovy. So it's just an extension of the fibre art, these sort of other works that the women are making. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.